DJ Liddell. <laughs> um, I think first and foremost, obviously, give our upperclassmen a ton of credit. Uh, we talked about um, yesterday and today, the message was they were gonna have to be the guys that, uh, that led this. And obviously, Coach Holtman's ability to build this program and the culture of this program, combined with the, uh, with the upperclassmen that we have that have been through some battles, uh, we felt like if anybody was built to, to withstand this type of adversity, we felt like it was us uh, for, for those two things primarily. So give our upperclassmen a ton of credit, first and foremost. And um, yeah, I, I texted EJ last night and told him uh, that you know he was going to need to be on it. Told him today to make us look good there on the bench, and man, did he ever. <laughs> Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Were you nervous? Yes. Um, <laughs> I get nervous before every game, to, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, this game has been so good to me. You guys, most of you guys know my story and how important this game has been to my family. Um, so there's a deep-rooted passion and love for this game. So there, there are always nerves uh, before every game for me. There were certainly a few more uh, this game. But coach, you know, I've been talking to coach nonstop and he gave me a lot of confidence um, and, and kind of talked to me and kept me calm. And, and I, I think our, our staff on the bench, our staff on the bench, you know, I felt like we were connected and I felt like we, we, were, we were really poised uh, in a game that had multiple runs and, and things. So that, those, those things and, um, it gave, gave me a lot of peace once we got out there and got going. Were you trying to live up to Coach Holtman or maybe your dad, just as a veteran coach? Like, you got a lot of guys on your shoulder right there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to uh, to work under some elite coaches, Hall of Fame Coach Homer Drew, Hall of Fame Coach Dad Mata, um, Bryce Drew, who's, who's obviously thriving at, at GCU. And, you know, I think being under Holt um, ha has had probably more than I ever thought helped help prepare me for, for this moment. Um, but certainly I, my dad and, and knowing he was here tonight was, uh, was, was special for sure for me. How much of a relief is it then when EJ comes out and starts the way that he does and kind of gets things rolling when you're coming off such a tough offensive performance the other night? Yeah, we felt like as a staff, it was gonna be a matter of time, Adam, that, that he was gonna get it going again. Um, and listen, he, he works really, really hard. He's put himself, you know, leading up to this season, continuing through the season, he's put himself in position to have games, you know, really, really good high level games. Excuse me. And I didn't, you know, really appreciated him having, I think it was a career high tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was, yeah, he, he, he was, his work has stayed as consistent, if not more over the last week and a half to, to he's earned this, you know, he earned this for sure. He, he talked about in the last week or so hearing doubters and hearing people wonder if he was going to get back to the form he showed before the pause. Did you see, in addition to the work ethic you just talked about, did you see that motivating him in any way or did you sense any of that from him? EJ is a competitor and, and so I don't know that he needed any extra motivation, but for those who did, thank you. Um, but he, he's competitive. He brings it every day. Um, he competes at a, at a high level. So um, I guess if he needed a little extra, that was much appreciated because it certainly certainly helped. Jake, how did you and Tony and Mike, I guess, kind of change things up in terms of what you normally do when a game that obviously the biggest change was for you, but I'm sure things changed for those guys as well. Yeah, um, we, we tried to just be in constant communication. We were all kind of um, mixing and matching responsibilities. Um, it required all of us to do more. Uh, so I think, you know, Mike and Tony certainly deserve a ton of credit. Um, you know, they, they should probably be sitting up here too, quite, quite honestly. Um, but I felt like we were really connected and we probably just communicated across the entire staff, which was certainly smaller than, than what it usually is. Uh, when you lose a guy like Brian Peden, who's, you know, one of the best play callers in the country, 
um, that's a big change. And certainly, you know, Coach Holman being out speaks for itself. So I think we just try to stay connected. We try to communicate, um, you know, and, and even the other guys on our staff, we'll name everybody, but everybody had to do a little more. So I, I think, you know, everybody who was wearing these nice little shirts deserves a ton of credit. And uh, what kind of growth do you feel like you saw from, from Malachi this week? Obviously, he went a little less there in Nebraska. I, I thought he still played pretty well in Indiana. Maybe he didn't quite score as much. And then, obviously, tonight he played well again. Just how did you think he kind of grew throughout the week? Yeah, I think even though some of those shots didn't go in against uh, Indiana, Malachi's figured the game is slowing down for him a little bit. Um, he's figuring out uh, how to get, get more shots off. And, and he's staying aggressive, um, playing with a little more physicality and, and force than, than what he started with at the beginning of the year. So, you know, we, we've our belief in him and, and really all our young guys in that transition right from high school to college is, is, is challenging. But, you know, he certainly started to emerge um, as an as a offensive weapon. And it's going to be hard, you know. Guys are going to game plan a little bit more for him now, and, and you know. But I think he's his consistency in practice is what's setting him up to have success like tonight. Yeah, can you walk us through the timeline here? When you found out, how you found out, and your immediate reaction? Yeah, uh, Coach Holman and, and um, Coach Peden weren't at practice yesterday, uh, so that was. We didn't quite know all the details of exactly what today would look like. Um, there, there's obviously some precautions that were taken yesterday. And then um, once we got word that it, it, they were, in fact, not going to be there, um, it, you know, it was became like a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zooms, a lot, a lot of conversations, you know, throughout last night and, and throughout today. Um, but we had it. We had it. We knew it was a possibility yesterday before practice. And, and so, um, you know, guys got to hear our, our voices, you know, uh, when we prepared for, uh, for the game, and, that, and that's when it started. So I have this right, you've never been a head coach in a, in a game, or did you do some high school, middle school, anything like that? I thought I was a head coach when I played. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought I was a head coach, right. To the dismay of some of my teammates, acted like it a little too much. Um, but yeah, this is the first time, and um, it's you got to talk a lot more, you know, than you do as an assistant coach. So forgive my voice, but um, it, it was a lot of fun. And again, I think our staff, our upperclassmen, you know, made it made it a lot of fun tonight. What was the hardest part? Um, Dr. Jay Billis said that the challenge. Not to be something you aren't, and he said, "Don't even, don't even bother talking to the refs, because they know you're an assistant, and they're just not going." Yeah, yeah, that was uh, right to the bias. Maybe I did that a little too much there. Thanks, Jay. Um, no, I think the hardest part was uh, <clears throat> when you're a, kind of in a coordinator role. How we divide the staff up, you, you almost have like a laser focus uh, during the game and your preparation. So the um, the overview of what a head coach has to do, that was different for me. Uh, that, that was different. So we do that a little bit in practice. Um, and, and coach gives us, we may split teams up and he'll give an assist to the team and, and things like that. So there's a little bit of that. But I think having to think through substitutions, you know, watching the offensive flow and the defensive flow and, and flow of the game, calling timeouts, communicating more in timeouts. But there's a lot of things. Um, and I, I had right, wrote all these things down that I could think of, and I'm sitting here calling. I'm calling Coach Holman, like, "Hey, Coach, you know, what about this? What about this?" He's like, "Hey, just be yourself. You know, just relax. Trust your instincts. Uh, be yourself. You know." And, and that was kind of the advice of some of the people that are mentors to me. You know, in, in the coaching world, that was the consistent advice that I got uh, leading up to the game. You got the floor kneel down, kneeling there down. You really, you really well. You look like a pro. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess uh, you you don't think about those things at all. I mean, I hope my posture wasn't too bad uh, bad out there. But um, yeah, I wanted to be mindful of the people behind us so they could see. But no, it was. Listen, tonight was tonight was a lot of fun. I can't state it enough. 
our, our, our staff, the collective group that we, we have, our upperclassmen, the culture that Coach Holtman has built here, like if anybody could do it, it was going to be us. Um, and we were confident in that. We were confident as a staff in that, and I believe our players were confident in that. Um, so, yeah, give, 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 give our guys credit. Um, Coach Holtman, you know, had his fingerprints all over this game, and, and so he deserves a ton of credit. Jake, you've you alluded to a lot of this already, but the, the idea of you, know, you watch the game tonight through a totally different perspective than what you usually do. I don't even know if you can reflect on this in the moment, but like, what do you more appreciate now about Coach Holtman or other head coaches that you've worked with now that you've filled those shoes? Yeah, I, I didn't know if my uh, my view of Coach's ability could get any higher. I mean, I think I think he is the best in the country, uh, but man. What he goes through on, on a game and prep for a game, you know, was, was obviously what, what we did as a staff today was significantly less than that even. Um, but I, I think his, his mind and his feel, he's so gifted in those areas. Um, and, and my appreciation for, for his ability to, um, you know, manipulate the game, whether it's with substitutions or conversations he has with guys coming out of the game, you know, you're managing personalities. You're like, there's all this stuff that goes into it, and, and he's so gifted. I mean, he, he is so gifted at it. So I think it just, you experience something like that, and it's almost like kind of hold him to an even higher esteem now, so. I, I know you, you kind of alluded to like some of the, the nervousness, the anxiety and whatnot. Was there a point, maybe it was EJ hot start, where you thought to yourself like, gee, this is actually pretty fun. I'm kind of enjoying this. Yeah, I think once the once the uh, ball was tipped, you know, it it uh, those feelings went away, and certainly I didn't realize. I knew EJ was played really really well and was was on one um, to start the game. I didn't realize. I think it was 17 points. I mean, that, I don't even know if that's a record. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was impressive. Um, and again, like I wish. EJ had unlimited eligibility, so if I'm ever fortunate enough to be in this situation again, I can have him with me because that was that was impressive. Coach, uh, what else? You know, besides EJ, obviously had a monster night, but you know, what else contributed? Did you think um, to you know having the worst offensive performance of the season? You know, just a couple of days ago to today, you know, potentially having the best of the entire season. Yeah, I, I think it was it was just a matter of time before we were going to play better offensively um, because we we. Our guys didn't lose confidence. We stayed. We we stayed with what we know. Um, but I think also our bench contributions, uh, Michi Johnson and Cedric Russell. You know, Justin Arms isn't going to. He's not going to go over five. Maybe again the rest of the year. And if one of your best uh, offensive weapons is having an off night, in order to be good offensively, you have to have guys step up. Malachi was was certainly really good. EJ was really good. I thought Kyle Young. Played um, with with the pop and the force and the activity that we love about him and that he's certainly capable of. Um, Zed Key, you know, did some things really well. But those threes that said and Michi hit, uh, and some of them very timely threes, was was critical for us. Obviously, EJ's done this all year. Though, even if he struggled the last two games, and it seems like Malachi's growth has been gradual. But this is really the first time this year where we've seen it both together. In the same game where they're both kind of having a great night, 58 combined points. When that happens and that starts to click more often, what does that open up for this offense? Yeah, it makes us it makes us uh, more dynamic. It opens things up for even more for some other guys because you have multiple guys out there who are such a threat. It opens things up for some other guys. Uh, certainly, we needed all of it tonight. Um, got we know we got to clean up some things on the other side of the ball. Uh, this is a this was a challenging team to prepare for, uh, considering all the change that happened in the last kind of 24, 48 hours. Um, our mindset was to keep it simple. That's not a simple team to play against. Uh, they, they, you know, Coach Collins runs really good stuff. They obviously have really good players. So uh, we knew it was going to be a challenge on the defensive side of the ball. We've identified some things these first three games on defense that we have to get back to doing at the level we were doing before our pause. Um, if we do that, we'll, we'll certainly be better on that end. But 
Yeah, we needed all. We needed all of it. All 11 threes. All uh, however many free throws. However the, the stats in front of me. How many free throws it was. I think it was one miss. And uh, we needed all of it tonight. And uh, maybe this is an oversimplification, but you guys basically almost had a month off here. And then you come back. You got like two road games, and you guys struggle. Is there just something to just being back at home and the comfortability of playing here? That's why you guys shot so much better than you had the last two games. Uh, without question. Without question. Our guys love playing here. Um, Buckeye Nation is great. They're good for, you know, on any given night, several point advantage for us. Um, but our guys love being here. There's certainly a familiarity and a comfortability, uh, which, you know, again, the change, that, that the, the adversity that we kind of went through the last day and a half, it, it, it's certainly great to be home. It was certainly great to be home. I think that was, that was really good medicine for us. Um, and, yeah, our, our guys are they're confident here. Uh, really confident here and, and, and love playing here. And our last two, we're going to hand it you, over. You mentioned EJ's stretch and not really knowing what he was like, how well he was doing at the time. But I'm curious, were you surprised to see maybe how open he was at points? Because that's that's what he uh, he said when I asked him. He's like, I was just shooting because Northwestern was giving me open looks. I mean, were you surprised to see EJ getting those open looks, or kind of what was going on to allow that to happen? Yeah, I think um, you know they. they their ball screen coverage was, was going to give him a window there to catch off, off some of that stuff. And um, his, he was ready. He's, his shots were good shots. I think you didn't really see him take any where you're like, ah, I wouldn't do that unless you're really on fire. But they were all good shots. Um, and, and so, again, he's worked really, really hard to develop that aspect of his game on the perimeter. And um, we showed him some things on film last couple games that he he took, evaluated, and, and went out and executed. Um, but his, his, yeah, I, I think his uh, his aggressiveness, we know he's going to be aggressive, and, and they were good looks. They were good looks. Some of them got a little more challenging as the game went on, for sure. Uh, but he still was in rhythm and knocked it down. Hey, Coach. Uh, I've got two questions. So uh, the game against Duke, Russell and and other guys stepped up key. So how, because I know when they got into the game late, when the game was close, they opened things up a little bit. Um, how important was that for you to have faith and trust in them? Yeah, we, we have confidence and, and a lot of trust uh, in, in our bench. And, and our depth you know, extends beyond even, even maybe what we were able to, to put out there at times tonight. I mean, I think we got multiple guys kind of down there who we believe can come in and help this team. Um, and the, the challenging part tonight was to kind of figure out who was who was in a rhythm and who could who could give you the, the best out there. But um, it's been different guys. You know, it's been different guys every game. And, that, and that's what we love about this team. We feel like our depth is a strength for us. And then the last question. As a player, you are also a floor leader, right? So now that you had to step up and be an active coach for a day, how did that translate from being on the floor as a player to being the main uh, person calling the shots as, as a coach? Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think ask. back. I want to age, but it's been a while since I've uh, <laughs> since I've played. But the one thing that that I, I love about this game is the camaraderie and the connectedness of teams. And I, I that was my favorite part of college. Um, you know, God, God's instilled in me just, I think, a, a natural desire to, uh, to lead. I was voted captain as a sophomore when I was in college. Um, and it's all about relationships. I think that's the thing that I love about basketball is it, it's a tool that can, that can you can build relationships with basketball. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you're from. Like basketball connects people. Um, and so I've always loved that. I loved it as a player. Um, and I, I just, I tried the relationships that I've been able to build with guys uh, on our team, you know, here. Just tried to keep those the same tonight. Didn't really try to do anything, anything different. Uh, didn't try to do anything crazy. I, I didn't, you know, wasn't trying to be coach. Um, and, and so that was fun, and, and you know, those guys, like 
it's a fun group to coach. It's a fun group to coach. So the, the relationship side, I think, will always be the same. It doesn't matter, assistant coach, head coach, wherever you're at, those are, you know, those exist in basketball. Basketball is a game that unites people, and, and I love that about it. What about that transition from a player to a coach? Yeah, uh, the, you know, the recovery time on the cases I do have to jump in practice. Uh, the recovery time is nowhere near what it used to be, <laughs> and uh, try to avoid that as as much as possible. But I miss I miss the the connect the camaraderie of a locker room probably more than anything. Uh, but we still have that as our um, in our staff, and that's the fun part. You know, I think our staff is so connected. So miss that being in the locker room, those conversations after a long practice, conversations after a win, um, but the competitiveness that you, you think you miss as a player, coaching feeds that. So yeah, it's a lot of fun.